I sort of don't like the title because I think it's a little bit loaded, but uh, we'll continue with it. Um, so my talk is going to explore in seven minutes really quickly um, the data portion of data science and what are you typically not, or what are you not told about this um, as you go through the practice and as you go through vetting solutions. So we want to start in a familiar place for ICOM, which is the hackathon. So the ICOM hackathon, which is a great uh, event that happened this year and in years past. It was a 24-hour hackathon where the data sets were pre-provided. So those are the constants, time and data. Um, all the teams have the same amount of time, same amount of data. The differentiators here are what are the features that were engineered, what are the methods that were used, and what is the experience of the team. Experience being a broad term, meaning vertical experience, experience with methodologies, how fast you can work, your coding expertise, et cetera. But what it highlights is that the way that you set yourself apart, the way that you have an edge, the way that you remain competitive is that you do some of these things better. You're better at feature engineering, you're better at methodology selection, and you're better at experience. But the real world doesn't function that way. Um, all those pieces are critical for data science solutions, but in addition now, the time piece is no longer constant, the data piece is no longer constant, and the funding piece is no longer constant. And you have to balance these pieces to understand, should I spend the extra five hours tuning this algorithm, tuning this model, or should I spend those five hours somewhere else? And so it really becomes an opportunity cost optimization problem, and much like a seven minute presentation, um, it's the same concept. So we're only gonna focus on one of these today and um, just trying to uncover a little bit of what's not typically told. And that is the data piece. So often um, it's said that data is new currency today. Uh, we are in the data age and that's all true um, in terms of data being a key differentiator for data science solutions and practices. But often what's not told is that um, it can also be the, the key detractor. It can be the key area where you're expending a lot of resource without a lot of gain. And what we've seen in working with a lot of clients, agencies, and cons consultancies is that um, frequently they don't have a, a good way, a good rigorous way to quantifiably assess which data points are actually providing value to the solutions or to the practice. And so three quick things and examples we'll go through today. Um, what companies don't really know, what is the underbelly of data science and the data piece, is gauging accuracy, gauging utility, and gauging source, and how this feeds a data science practice and solutions for competitive edge. So this busy eye chart that you see here um, with a question at the top, do you know which of your data points are reliable? So source A and source B, which I won't name here, but are two of the largest data providers um, that supply demographic data, et cetera. And what we did was we took all of their data, thousands and thousands of data points, and compared them. So when they have the same data point, we categorized them and said, how often do they tell the same story for the same customer? So if you take marital status, does source A say you're single? Does source B also say you're single? And what you start to see is that some of the data points that you see just 12 plotted here on the bottom left are at 90%, which is pretty good. But you see other ones that are standard demos at 20%. And so now the nat natural question is who's right and who's wrong? Because if you can't figure this out, you're buying data, which is opportunity cost lost, um, and potentially bad data. And so after this step, you have to submit a truth set and really have a point of view now and flag which sources of data provide you the best data quality for that uh, particular demographic attribute or different attribute. So that's step one um, to really evaluate the data and have a point of view, and that gets you to the first cut. The second cut then after you've decided on which data is legitimate is to say how much of it's missing and what do I do with it? And typically um, what we produce on the far left side, I guess where you're sitting, is a missingness map. So everything in, in gray there is when the variable is either null or missing, everything in white is when it's populated. And these are actually variables used in a given model that we had audited. And what it shows is that often variables are used with null or imputed uh, values. And depending on the chart on the right, you can see that different imputation techniques have vastly different uh, results. And so the question is, one, how much of your data is actually missing? How much of it is actually imputed? And how does it impact your models? Often that's not brought out in the algorithms. Often that's just overlooked. But it's a key component to understand what data should we go after. So when the, those first two steps are all completed, the question now is, does the data actually help? So this is a, a real world example. I can't name the client. Um, but we took in um, first 300 variables, then 800, then um, we actually just took in about 4,000. And the question was, does this help our models or are we buying data that's not worthwhile? And what you see on the right side is an ROC curve. And essentially, um, just they had a robust set of first-party data and we layered on all this other third-party data. 
the improvement was negligible. And it's not the answer that they necessarily wanted to hear because they had already bought this data. Um, but in some sense, it shows how important it is to understand what is the actual impact. When you're spending a ton of money that you could have spent elsewhere, whether that's resource time or budget, um, you want to be very, very careful. And also, on the left side, you see that um, the variables that were purchased only show up about 24 and 24th and uh, lower rank. And so really, this step is the most critical to say how valuable is the data and to be able to quantify it. So we provide a score back and a dollar value back for that data point. The last piece, once you have all of this, is do you know the where and how of the data? So again, these are all larger topics, um, not able to be accomplished in seven minutes. But once you have an idea of which data is valuable, which data is good, and have vetted all those pieces and cut down the spend so that you only have the valuable data pieces that really work, the next question is, which are the gray area variables that may go away in the future? And do you know what happens if those go away from your models? And often the answer for many companies is they have no clue. They understand how the models function today, the ROCs, the accuracy, the MAEs, but for the future scenarios, when you're replacing or removing variables, what is the impact? And that is really the, the critical step that you have to take to say, these variables uh, within the mix um, may not exist through GDPR, through different uh, consumer trust issues, so what is the impact? So all that being said, what are the key takeaways? Um, it's really to allow data scientists to have a voice in data decisions, and something that we've been advocating um, so that the purchasing of data is a critical component and a way to optimize the data science practice. So if you don't have data scientists evaluating and helping with that practice, you're likely overspending. Um, have a method of evaluation and ranking. We have a power score and an informed score that quantifies and ranks data. Uh, reinvest the money. So the money that you're saving now on data due to having utilized uh, methodologies to figure out what you can exclude, where do you reinvest that? Is that in talent or experience? Is that in time? Um, and you find the, the right mix that we talked about uh, at the beginning. And finally, um, from a total method across the differentiators we mentioned, what is the optimal mix? It's a larger question, um, but um, it's something that's really important to figure out. How do we balance all those pieces, not just the features, not just the methods, um, and not just the experience, but the time, data, and funding components as well.